breathe. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Hello, everyone. Uh, audio? Yes, I have audio. I wonder if that's enough. Maybe I need to be louder. I should be way louder. I'm just going to come and cause... Uh, pain to everyone's ear holes. Hopefully. We'll see. Too loud there, Sean? Can't confirm. Can't confirm pain to ear hole. <laughs> I... It confuses me because my mic thing always says it's okay. And I don't know why. I don't know. Whenever I... Just have, every single quick. time I restart the PC, I have to fiddle around with my mic volume because it changes itself. Sometimes it's too loud. Sometimes it's too quiet. And I haven't done fuck all. Yeah. I I don't change this week to week. It just I don't I don't freaking know. Um okay. Intro time. Are are we too quiet? Pardon? I don't know. Goose. Geese. Tooth. Teeth. Moose, meese, hoof, heath, quoth, queeth, fourth, thief. Ah, uh, there's still no fucking baby. I'm going mad. I'm David. That's Eric. That's Shiver. This is the relay station. Here we go. <laughs> I think that might be the best one you've ever done. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, before we begin, uh, Shiver and Miles, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, Thanks, we... Shiv. <laughs> it, it was... It's kind of horrible. Both Wednesday and Thursday, we were like... To the point that we were packed and ready to go to the hospital because contractions. And then right as we were like, okay, it's time to go. One more and we go. They stop. Baby's like, ha ha. <laughs> Baby was just having a party. <laughs> yep. Baby's killing me. Killing me. You think he's killing you I, now. Yeah, I was just <laughs> thinking the same. Jesus fucking Christ. Um... So they weren't actually Braxton Hicks uh, contractions. They are prodromal labor, which is false Isn't... early labor. I thought Braxton Hicks was that particle scientist we're looking for recently. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of layers to that joke, and I quite love it. I like it. Uh... Oh, man, that was good. So welcome, welcome to the the podcast, everyone. It's we have a new ship. It's Saturday. Yeah, it is. It is Saturday. That is the day of the week. It's also September twenty eighth. Which means we're getting unless close you're to watching a new the pack. unless you're watching this on YouTube. In which case, it's post apocalypse. Yes. <sighs> How are you enjoying the apocalypse today? It's not bad. Weather's, weather's holding up. I like a nice nuclear winter. <laughs> hmm. Uh, weather here has been... It started getting cold. Winter's coming. Yeah. It's really funny because it's uh, in Calgary. It's um, snowing this entire weekend. And it's yeah. like... It's basically right around freezing. And in the middle of the week, it's going back to like fall weather. Yeah, you, you guys know. are getting some weird ass storm, aren't you? Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah, uh, we're supposed to get like twenty centimeters of snow, and then it'll all be gone in like four days. But it's okay. Global warming is fake. Well, global Can't warming you... is a bad way of explaining it. Yes, climate change. Climate change really is. is. Climate change is a much better way of explaining it. Yes. Because then people go, "It's not getting warmer," and you're like, "Well, no, but 
the planet getting warmer makes some areas colder and do weird shit with the weather and then other bad stuff happens and we just shouldn't do that that would be good yeah yep sorry I'm very tired. um <laughs> <laughs> I w- oh, no, I, I watched this um, Blue Planet Two, and the way that the climate's changed, and they they showed uh, walruses have to go much further out to get food, and then they're all going back to one island, and it's overcrowded with walrus, and they're trying to climb this uh, mountain. Excuse me, excuse to get me, Shiver, space. excuse me, Walrai. Thank you. Okay, and it's fucking tragic because walruses, Walrai, are not built to climb mountains, and. Just watching all these walrus, walry, <laughs> sake, falling down this mountain like Homer Simpson in the fucking cartoon is absolutely atrocious. Yeah. And if you're going to sit there and say climate change isn't real, fucking watch Blue Planet 2 and you get back to me and you say that's natural and normal. Sorry. Poor walry. Sorry. I, I know there are people who don't believe it and everyone's passionate about it. At the end of the day, what... What's the worst that could happen? We clean up our planet. Oh, fuck. What assholes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn. Would hate to have, like, clean air to breathe and water to drink and shit. That's... Oh, that's... Really. Communism. Actually, this is quite topical because... Uh, maybe last week topical because uh, in... Um, in uh, Star Citizen Live last week, not this week's, um, they're talking about the lore. And uh, they were talking about Earth in the lore and how uh, part of the reason that we developed terraforming technologies in the 22nd century, Earth was badly overpopulated and how it like in more like the actual modern times of Star Citizen, like the 30th century, they've actually had to do some minor terraforming on Earth to try and bring it back to the way it was, way it should be, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty interesting. It's good lore. Very top. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. So, what did you guys uh, think of Star Citizen this week? Shiver and I were having a good conversation before the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Great time for it. <laughs> it's, it's funny, actually, because <laughs> the call for this starts a half hour before this starts. And uh, Nakara was having some cuter, com, some cuter issues. Yeah, some, cute, <laughs> some cuter I'm issues. issues. I'm having issues being cuter. No. Uh- <laughs> yeah, so Nakara was having some cuter issues, so it was just me and Shiver bouncing things back and forth, and we were having a really rousing and good discussion about Star Citizen. Um, and now we've started this, and we're like, I don't know what the hell to talk about now. <laughs> Maybe you should replay your entire conversation. No, nah, it's not a <laughs> good conversation to have. <laughs> so that fucking mantis. <laughs> yeah, let's... I have, mixed, uh... I have those mixed feelings. Uh, because uh, on, on the one hand, it's like, why? What the fuck? Why are you doing this now, CIG? Like, quantuming takes so long right fucking now. And then dragging, giving the potential for it to be dragged out even more by players... Oh, God, that's not a good idea. However, to play devil's advocate to myself, it was ready, it got done, and it's going in the game, which is exactly what they said they were going to do. As things come online and they get built, they go in the game. And it's like, <gasps> okay, so... Do we need a voice really, for the know, moose? It's not like, do we? Do we yes. have a voice for the moose? I don't know. Astropub is asking if we need a voice for the moose. <clears throat> Of course we need a voice for the moose. We could do with a moose loose about the hoose. <laughs> we do with the moose about the hoose. I like it. Um, sorry, carry on, Shiver. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit... You can't really... Uh, that, that's why I'm mixed about it, because it's like, oh, fucking... Not a good idea. At the same time, this is exactly what you said you were going to do, and it was ready, and it got done, and it's going in. So yep. mixed, I, and, and yeah, and I'm I'm worried that they're gonna. It's gonna be another one of those really expensive ships, and I don't think it justifies the price. And yeah, but then again, to counter my own self again, you only need to get thirty, uh, forty dollar uh, Mustang or Aurora package. 
play yeah. Star Citizen. So, yeah, Ma you know mixed feelings. You know what I think is the most interesting? I mean, per to me, obviously, a lot of people will be interested in some of the other features, but one of the most interesting things to me about this ship is the quantum markers and being able to track targets through quantum. This is like, going to break things. I apologize. Oh, yeah. We're going to do it anyway. Here we go. Uh, North does have a really good point of, you know, the percent of players having a Mantis to players who don't have a Mantis. So that is a good point, and the space. That is a good point. Hello. We're going to try and do it. Hey, it's your boy, Paul. Ruining your, your setups. Completely ruining hey, the setups. That's okay. That's what setups are there for. They're, they're here to be ruined. Congrats on the shout out last week. Thanks. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting it. I have to work it into. See, since then, I have not been able to do a Galactic Historian because I've either been sick or, like, you know, Cam's been going to the hospital or something mm -hmm. else has been happening. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I need to work it into one of the Galactic Historians. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is Cam okay? She's okay. I, um, I haven't talked to you since then. So. Yeah, yeah. She's, um, she has gotten, um, she bruised her alder nerve. Ooh. Um, and uh, which is uh, basically bruised her funny bone. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's not, not that's not pleasant. No, no. Uh, she also um, bruised her tailbone and um, has a uh, a contusion on her um, on her elbow. She's okay. shit. Yeah. Well, so I mean, she's in a lot of pain, but the doctor's like, you're not going to die from it. And the only thing you really need is pain medication and rest. That's about it. But even 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 he was like, it's best for you just move it around a lot. You got to move it and use it because it's going to make it feel better. Yeah, it'll, it'll uh, increase blood flow and heal it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that uh, that sounds painful. <laughs> and. From someone who's actually had problems it. with their, like, I've had problems with my tailbone before. It's so hard to move when you hurt it. Uh huh. It everything hurts when it when you when you hit it. Everything yeah. hurts because it's your it's your spine essentially. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, I need to get up. Well, that's going to take an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the doctor did give her a sling to use. Um, so like she's at work right now, but uh, um. She's got a sling, so everyone who comes in is like, oh, what's wrong? She's like, oh, you know, this horror story. And then uh, um, people don't bother her as much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> they gave her a sling for her tailbone? Yes. Um, no, she gave, they gave her the sling for the, um, for the uh, contusion on the, um, on the elbow. So she, ah, so yes. she's... Okay, so, uh, okay, sorry, I, I was getting things set. Welcome, yes. welcome, uh, Moose. Moose. I am Moose. Oh, Thank geez, Rocky. <laughs> Thank you for having me on there. Uh, funny, funny story. <laughs> it's so, cold up here in the Great White right North. <laughs> funny story. So my friends and I are playing through old, like we're having sort of a weekly D&D &D night, except it's not D&D &D because none of us have that kind of time. But yeah. We're, we're getting together for like an hour or two on Wednesdays to play through like some of the old classics. So we actually just finished Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. we started Baldur's Gate 2. And right at the beginning of Baldur's Gate 2, when you go through all this crappy story stuff and you get out into this like market area, in the market, there is a cage. And in the cage are a moose and a squirrel. <laughs> oh them easter eggs them easter eggs love it i i thought it was fantastic and uh yeah okay That's uh let's one. you know what shiver you gave you you talked a bit about the um the mantis uh nakara what do you think about well i what I, I sort of touched on it but that's when we, re when we added paul to the call uh, i think yeah. that uh or the moose. Apologize. Um, I the, maybe the moose is called Paul. You never know. Um, but I thought the quantum marker thing is really interesting um, because that, like, being able to track somebody through quantum, is like 
and going to be a very valuable tool, I think, because it doesn't matter if they run away, you know? <clears throat> um, something I didn't expect this ship to have, so that that's pretty neat ability. What do you think, Paul? Uh, about the Mantis? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's something we already have in game. I think it was an easy copy paste over mostly with some, some slight changes. Cause they, I'm sure they have to use do I, UI work and stuff like that to make it work properly. And I think it probably has something to do with squadron 42. Um, I, I, I got in a very long conversation about this with some people who are really upset. Like, why do we have this and not like, uh, um, you know, the, the, uh, what's it called? The, um, the Taurus. And it's like, well, because this is a new mechanic and it likely built this ship to test this new mechanic because mm -hmm. that way they can use this ship as the base ground for all of the rest of this in, in the future. And so they might like... have, they might need this ship for squadron. That's why it's mm -hmm. done and announced at the same time. Like it might be just a ship that <clears throat> it's done. Yeah. Here we go. Right? See if this works. Wait, oh, right, why do right. I have shiver twice there? Whatever. I'm gonna... Shiver twice. How did I manage that? <laughs> Nobody wants uh, this. <laughs> Wait, uh, I'm I'm shiver now. Well, that's yeah. new development. <laughs> I'm really not very good at manipulating these. I'm sorry. Yeah, for some reason my camera's not working for this. I have to figure this out eventually because <laughs> I just re reinstalled everything. But oh, wait, it's wait, fine. Wait. You're a moose for now. There we go. Oh, there we go. I see you. I am moose. I'll get you there I shortly. Am, I am moose. I love that you're putting me in the shiver window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then shiver is going in the Nicaragua. <laughs> this is all according to plan. Just, to yeah. in and just totally ruin this podcast. Oh, Look, man. you guys want professionalism. <laughs> do not say, no do not say the captain's table. Nicara. Do not say the captain's table because we are not professional. Like in no, no, way, no. I'm just. Before. I'm saying you want professionalism. You've oh. come to the wrong community. Okay. <laughs> hey, now there's two of me. I like it. Yes. Um. So, no, but um, uh, my my point is, and I'll, I'll finish it up, is that I think that um, <laughs> the the game or the the mechanic itself needed to be put into Star Citizen and Squadron 42. And so they killed two birds with one stone, created a base model for um, for them to t test the mechanics on in terms of player mm -hmm. usage. Yeah. And that also, uh, and then they also uh, needed the mechanic for Squadron 42, so they used that ship for that mechanic, either as an NPCs or as a, a player situation or something like that. So, yeah. so two things. Um, one, it looks just so much like a Star Trek ship. I just thought that too, especially in that picture. Like, mm -hmm. it's got the nacelles, the nacelles, yeah. and the red on the front, and then the blue mm -hmm. behind. It's it's a Star Trek. Like it, this That's ship cool. is one hundred percent a Star Trek like reference which that's the new that's the new rsi style rsi is is the federation style in terms yeah. of like in Star, in Star, Star i'm okay with that it makes it makes rsi finally look less crappy um also like this ship is the other thing i know I, I thought about this ship was that it like it immediately screams rsi when you look at it yeah like that's an rsi ship i don't like, know what I you're know. talking about that that ship does not have struts <laughs> well at least to me it looks very rsi-ish when you look at it it's ju it's the color scheme it's the mm -hmm. the white and the black well, and the the weird like nodes that aren't needed like why is there all this overlap why are there's are there all these overlapping things and like because it just, it's fun i know but it's 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 design they're designing to be fun not practical something like yeah. misc is practical it's yeah, a ship. Very. It flies. Something like RSI is like, no, we need, we need like weird little flanges up the ass. Mm -hmm. It goes, it goes origin because we have money. Fuck you. That's the reason why it, it just, it doesn't look practical at all. It's mm -hmm. not, it's gaudy. Yeah. Then RSI, then something like Anvil or Aegis where it's like <laughs> rides the line of looking good and, and doing its function. And then uh, MISC because it, it does its yeah, and it say, that's the same. That's probably before Anvil, and it's it's more flair than function. Yeah. And then um, then Misk is is function over form, 
see the freelancer cockpit. And then, <laughs> then there's Drake, which is just like, you want ship? We give ship. Ship is here. All bare wires, nothing. It's like, you want yeah. the ship? We give you ship. You uh, complain. At the same time, <laughs> I have to agree with Nakara over there, or Shiver, whoever. I'm not changing those right now. Um, <laughs> Shikara? Shikara. I don't like them adding that mechanic at this point in the game. Shiver and I were having a rousing conversation before the cast started about how, or at least I was sort of ranting about how the thing that I, I am least interested in in Star Citizen right now is travel. I don't want to take a half hour to travel anywhere. Like, quantuming already takes Ooh, forever i don't want to be pulled out of quantum by some jackass and his crew who are going to pull me out and he's going to have a mantis pulling me out and then they're going to have like a whole bunch of ships around them because they're all shivering they're all dicks and they're all trying to kill me i don't want to do that i don't, I don't want it don't be a dick ship seriously <laughs> Shiver, I'm I, really I, disappointed in you. I think I actually don't think that's going to be a problem because it's going to be the only way you're going to be able to use it to be a dick is to like just camp outside of um, areas like Olisar. And if you use the mechanic, it sounds like it's going to be incredibly power hungry. Mm -hmm. It actually sounds like the ship is kind of worthless. It's a ship that has one job and one job only, which is to pull people out of quantum or to stop them from quantuming. But in doing so, it leaves itself incredibly vulnerable and requires other players to do it. It's like a complete one trick pony to the point where it's like, other than trolling with it or, you know, doing piracy in the future or whatever, it literally has no purpose. It, it will do one thing good. It's going to be for groups, right? Oh, yeah. But you really like, but it's going to be so like that person who's in there is basically just going to be a, a sitting duck waiting to get shot unless they have backup because they won't be able to use their guns or their shields will be low or something like that. It'll, it'll they'll, they'll balance it to the point where other than its job of it, it, it almost feels like this mechanic is needed and they built it around this ship. But by doing so, they could have just done the same thing with a mine. You know what I mean? I'm kind of wondering why they didn't do a mine or like yeah. a net of mines. Like you have to set a net of mines and then you'll like capture people quantuming through. But yeah. there's also like it's got to be so huge, right? But yeah, it. One well, thing... actually, I think I think that's that's very likely going to be possible. Um, especially since they talked about how the mines are entirely made out of ship components, so yeah. you can kind of build your own mine. One thing that um, will be interesting is once this is in the hands of players, we're going to get a really, really good idea really, really quickly of one, how effective it is, how difficult it is, and how much it disrupts gameplay. Like we will know pretty, pretty early on the game is now unplayable because anyone can be pulled out and then destroyed or the ship is completely useless because you no one ever comes close enough for you to grab. Like mm -hmm. we'll have metrics and that's probably a reason they want to get this in early enough is to get those ideas so that if it's completely broken, they can figure another way to do it. Yeah. I'm thinking this is the same thing. Uh, I, mm. You know, it may, may not be our favorite time for it to come into the game, but I think it's just like, well, they have the ship, it's done. And they need to test the mechanics. So here it is. You know, it's kind of the deal. Yeah. With Alpha. <laughs> okay. We um, had some other things this week. Mm -hmm. um, they showed off the uh, the Defender. They sure did. She's looking pretty. She also looks very, 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 very much like a crab from the front. <laughs> like 170%. Yeah, I especially silverback. Silverback well, there's gorilla. You know, silverback gorilla with like glowy crab eyes. Like there's two glowy crab eyes right at the it's front. Got, it's got glowy crab eyes and big arms that come out front. It's a crab. I really like <laughs> how sinewy it looks inside. Like they they got that looking better than I thought they would. Um, it's pretty. Yeah, it's getting better. 
It's pretty shit. As I've said before, and we'll say again, CIG are very good at making pretty ships. Yes, they are. Space crab. Yeah. And, and pretty caves. And pretty Damn, caves, Damn, those yeah. caves are pretty. Space crab. Yeah, it is space crab. Yep. Space crab. I completely agree with Carnifex as well. After looking at this, I'm like, yeah, the merchantman's going to look sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a lot more rounded than it used to be, I think, too. Very likely. Like, because like Merchman had all these points, I feel like this is going to be more. It's going to look more like an actual space whale. Considering that the Merchantman had like forty six different concepts, it's going to yeah. look like one of them. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> it's actually interesting that you know that this looks kind of like a crab, um, and the Banu are sort of crap. Which one? Banu are like slender, long, tall traders i am groot yeah yes yeah yeah fair uh but I, i'm They're hoping i'm hoping that they they take the crab of this and incorporate some kind of like either fish like or animal like in, uh, whale like whale, a whale yeah. or a whale or into like the, the merchantman or something like yeah yeah and maybe it there can sense. be Maybe there can be a, you know, maybe Benny Merchantmen have like a 0.01% of becoming sentient and then they become real space whales. <laughs> I... Real space whales. <laughs> Moya. I'm okay. Maybe, maybe there's yeah. a special dedicated hangar bay that can hold two whales named George and Gracie. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. <sighs> I enjoyed it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh boy. So yeah, Merchantman. I think they made some improvements on the textures too, because that was one thing that would looked really weird early mm -hmm. on. Let's say there's some some surfaces some surfaces were lacking textures when they were showing it early on. But god that ship looks gorgeous on the outside. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. it looks interesting, it looks different. Um yeah. I still think it's going to be a complete and utter waste of money for most people because it's it's essentially kind of like a Vanguard, but it won't have the toughness of a Vanguard. But isn't but that all of the alien ships? They're completely useless and terrible? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So far, all of the alien ships have been completely useless and terrible, and one worries that the merchantmen also will be. Mm, it almost eh. guaranteed it isn't to be it's almost guaranteed not to be because it's a cargo hauler so as long as yeah. you can haul cargo you're good <laughs> all of the all of the alien ships we've had so far were combat ships and yeah. uh the merchantman the, the merchantman's big like wow. dealio is it's is it's flying bizarre status yeah. which sounds cool but how the fuck are you gonna do that how are you gonna sell I stuff? Have no idea um uh, the the thing that i love about the merchantman is that not not only is it a flying you know bizarre but it also is terrifying to try and fight because it's got enormous guns. With <laughs> mission sharing. Yay. Yay. Mission sharing. Fucking finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank my God. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on on oh. the list of things that are a basic requirement for a multiplayer game. I mean, especially in open world game yeah you know what i'm gonna argue i'm gonna argue that that star citizens all right all right here because no man's sky didn't even have the ability to see other players <laughs> no 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 but I, you, no no see there's there is a logical fallacy with that you can't use no man's sky as an idea of a well done completed game because it took them four years after launch to complete the game to complete it it was yeah. just a joke we're good. It's true, dumb. Serious, it's but... true, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the internet, Nakara, and everything you say is said extremely seriously. Anything mm. you say can and will be used against you. I do have a problem. One problem with this sharing, the, this, the mission sharing. Uh, they're just. I mean, essentially, what they'll do is they'll make some missions basically required to have sharing. Um, well, they were saying that like, the level five. Uh pirate one or the level five uh -huh. one mm -hmm. you have to have people with you because it's gonna be so hard yep and 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 eris is just he's just gone 
he's mm-hmm. just gone. He usually disappears at least once during the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's upcoming changes to Arena Commander that I quite like because I, 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 I think I'm the only person that still enjoys Arena Commander. Of uh, They're changing it from 20 waves down to 10 waves. And on the 10th wave, you get in a load of Merlin. I think it's 10 Merlin wingmen. And you've got to take down um, a hammerhead. That's pretty neat. That's really? cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. you also cool. and you also you also they also expanded the size of Arena Commander. Yes. So that oh, Arena Commander is no longer specifically no Dying Star. Dying Star the is other, a bigger map. The Good. other the other map is the same size because of technical limitations currently. That's yeah, that's an old map as well, isn't it? That's it's the first really map. Old. Look, mm. Paul, beer is required for the relay station. Okay. Beer fine. is not in this room. I'll be right back. <laughs> It's just me that needs the beer. I'm the one that needs to drink. God. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, yeah, mission sharing is important. Cool. Uh, weapon attachments. Yep. Uh, three sizes, small, medium, large, yada, yada. The thing I like most about this um the thing that i am happiest about this in all of this weapon attachments is that there is a silencer for shotguns it's not a silencer it's not a silencer it's a suppressor it's a suppressor it's a suppressor yeah yes sorry there is what a su- go ahead yeah. there's a suppressor for shotguns and there's nothing that i like more than a suppressor on a shotgun. It is just... <laughs> it's just music in my ear holes. You like ear hole music? I love ear hole music. I like I just love the music. I just love the fact that we're going to have dazzling in game and uh, and blinding in game yep. because that's yep. amazing. <laughs> uh, it was clearly <laughs> really early. Um, Mm -hmm. the blinding that they showed because what they showed is really bad yep um it it looks really bad but it looks like battlefield three levels of uh yeah you know kind of and you're now blinded and you're blinded and you're oh and now it's gone and you're blinded and you're blind and you're blind and now it's gone um and it doesn't dissipate at all Mm -hmm. wherever you are like it's full-on blind it should be only if you're looking directly at anyway They'll work that out. Um, it's nice. It's they're finally adding some some stuff that any FPS kind of needs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I know they're going to get more in depth than this too, because I think the idea that is that there's at least one type of gun that they can so you can swap out like the the chambers mm-hmm. or like the the um, the the barrels. Um, for increased bullet size and that, or in- increased um, calibers, mm-hmm. um, and like swap out like the stocks and everything. So. Yeah, there's one. There's one gun. I can't remember. It's the one of the bearing ones, but it goes all the way from like, it's just like swappable parts all the way from a pistol up to like yeah, a sniper rifle and everything in between, and it's just all like modular parts. Um, which is and. Uh, super cool um one of the games i'm yeah i i want to play soon uh there's a beta going on right now i've played some of the alphas is uh ghost recon breakpoint Mm -hmm. because i always adore the customization of guns in ghost recon games and the swapping out stocks and swapping out like uh chambers and swap like the gun system that they've got going on in that is really really mm-hmm. good and there's full customization of almost every component of the gun and i really really enjoy that shit so uh if star citizen added more of that that would be good <laughs> did they ever add there, that range i found the uh i found the screenshot or the the image here there it is right there it's the uh, p8 series and, uh, yeah, did did they ever add this rifle range to Star Citizen? Because they really should. No, they really need to add it. There should be a rifle range somewhere. 
with unlimited ammo. Um, and, the ability to, and the ability to like pay a fee and just try guns. You shouldn't even have to pay a fee. It should be just here's like, a, t- range. a tiny, tiny fee, like twenty U- UEC. Yeah, twenty bucks. Um, speaking of UEC, oh no. Okay, we'll speak of UEC later. First, uh, a new pistol. A charge up uh, yes. shotgun pistol. Well, no, that's nowhere near the full range of this thing. It's normally just a normal pistol. It's normally a charge f- it up. A f- yeah. And when you charge it up, it becomes a shotgun. I like it. I think, I think it's it looks super cool. Ridiculous. This is the gun I was showing. I showed an image of, of a couple weeks ago on this show. It's it's funky looking. I don't like the looks of it when shooting it. It's too thin in the handle, and then it thickens out too much on the body uh, when you're aiming down sights. But looks cool. That's it. I love the idea of having a having a pistol that can become a handheld shotgun because it gives you a lot of flexibility there. But it, I I question whether it'll be good enough as a pistol or good enough. Like I'd rather just have a shotgun. Well, here's the thing: if you say since you're, there's limited, depending on your armor, um, light armor gives you the most flexibility and movement. It doesn't weigh you down as much. You can turn faster, all those sorts of things. Um, but you can only carry one primary. Yeah. So if your primary is a long range weapon, you need something that can pack a punch um, closer, close to medium. Then this essentially works as a shotgun uh, in close ranges, but it also works as a uh, as a pistol uh, for medium ranges. Yeah, because so. they're showing there the you know you have a pretty accurate, pretty accurate fire with a very large bullet out to like 30, 40 yards. You mm-hmm. know? Are SMGs <clears throat> considered primary? Yes, they are a primary weapon. So, and I I think I complained about this like however many it's years two, ago. It's a two handed weapon. Is the reason why. I still disagree with this basic concept as a person that likes to use sniper rifles. They're basically saying that with light armor, you can hold a sniper rifle and a pistol and that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Then wear medium armor. Who wears medium armor? Everyone's too heavy. Choose Astro. He just likes to be a problem. I know, but it's just... Medium, like your typical loadout for most people is a heavy head, a heavy helmet, medium chest piece, and light ar- light shoulders and light or light arms and light legs. That gives you protection in the, where most people will shoot, which is your you know midsection. Protect you from headshots because the heavy helmet will, will block like two two sniper shots in some cases, and it will still it won't slow you down as much as um, or you still get kind of the more flexibility from that. That tends to be the typical. So. It was Battlefield 4. The the thing that made me really made me hate Battlefield 4 the most was one that medics automatically would get the most points any game because reviving someone got them 100 points and spotting got you nothing as a sniper. And mm-hmm. two, that a shot to the head from a sniper rifle was not enough to kill a person. I've always hated that. That to me is bullshit. I remember that. I remember that when I first played. I'm like, what the what the fuck have they done? Yeah, that's the point of being the sniper. Yes. Anyway, no, you you need to be able to. If you're a sniper, you got to be able to kill with one shot, or else mm, it's that's dark. the entire point of a sniper. <laughs> um. So they've they've done an, uh, a facelift. <laughs> On the face, uh, I don't even know what to call it. The face... character customization. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess it's a weird character customization. It's like your character melder. Yeah, I think it's an interesting way to do it. I've never seen this done before. I don't think it has I been mean... done before. I think it's more realistic, honestly, because the idea of blending faces together 
makes a lot more sense than like making the hero of Kavach from from Oblivion, you know, yeah. or like <laughs> yeah, totally. the weirdest fucking guy you can you can make who would be impossible, who wouldn't exist in reality because you're going to break the editor. Yeah. Essentially, this is keeping your features within the realistic limits of human anatomy yeah. while also trying to keep it uh, giving people enough uh, like diversity options that, that they can kind of make whatever they really want to it's yeah it's like uh let me see if i can bring this image up god i hate google images now no it fuck off goes. pinterest god <laughs> can i just see the image 90 like percent of it I need to I need to block Pinterest as a source. It's it's horrible. I just want to see an image. Anyway, it is I think horrible. we should I think we should hold a vote here. I think we should vote here vote here uh for Pinterest to be uh, abolished. As yeah, I'm, I'm all in favor. Aye. Um anyway, the, there's every time a game comes out, um I just remember like Fallout 76 came out and people are creating like Shrek in the Fallout 76 <laughs> character creator, right? And it's like, <gasps> oh. I mean, well done. You you clearly found a game to play because Fallout 76 is bad. Um, good job. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I wait, like, I, wait. I love yeah, it. You you like oh, Fallout God. 76? I do. I do. <laughs> he really likes it. I. So actually, uh, Cass and I have been trying to get back into it and have been un unable to lately, just because. She's mega pregnant. <laughs> well, she's mega pregnant and she can only sit for a limited period of time, mm -hmm. but also it's just really unstable still after like oh, all God. this time. It's been a long time. It's been a long time and it's still unstable. And the oh, problem man. is it's not even the game that we like. It's the being able to build and decorate homes together in the game with all of the fun options that they have because they've got the best damn options for building stuff. There's mm -hmm. no other game that compares. You know what's a really great game for that that was like a billion years ago? Uh, the Sims Online. Yes. Well, was I was going to say, you're basically looking for, for a multi multiplayer Sims. Yeah, yes. and there was one. There was one like back when I was a, like a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, Believe me, I played Sims Online when I was a teenager. I played a guy so in an I. ambassador's suit with an ant head. It was beautiful. I was a polar bear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's what I want. I want a game that she and I can play together and build houses in together and decorate them with the skulls of our enemies together mm -hmm. that's yeah i mean i don't blame you i mean hopefully that will be star citizen but it won't <sighs> well, uh, she's never gonna play it jesus oh fair enough maybe anyway, you should tell her she should play it. she should play it i've i've tried would, and then i've tried be good. well but now it's not the right time when it's done now it's not the right time for anybody to play it, except yeah. for those you know extreme well i shouldn't say that People who are very dedicated to the game and to testing it, now is a good time to play. I I don't play very often because I feel like I'll get burned out on it if I play it every day. Um, so they they talked about another thing that they're going to be adding, which is fucking finally ship rentals. Yeah, they're really expensive though. You notice that? Yes, I noticed. That's remember how earlier <laughs> I was like, we're going to talk about UEC later. Well, yeah. we're going to talk about UEC now. That's a lot of money. <sighs> this alpha is all... Star Citizen is an alpha, for any of you that weren't aware. Um, this alpha should be all about testing the game and trying out the economy and trying out the ships and testing the ships and everyone being able to test things because it's a fucking alpha. This is not the place to require 180,000 UEC to rent a ship for a single day. I agree. Period. What do you, what do you no, think, Paul? No comment on the, on the on the costs. All I know is that that's probably going to change. Um, well, there's also because just because I'm NDA for that one. Um, yeah, fair but enough. I but I will say that generally speaking, 
I would prefer higher prices rather than lower prices. And this is the reason why. Um, because you, what you're looking for is for someone to try the ship uh, in game and see if it's useful. But you also don't want it so that that person can just basically rent the ship rather than buy it and never have to worry about it. Um, I agree to a, to, to a point that it is a little high for an alpha. If you want people to just to test it, it needs to be lower. But I, I think what CIG does is they tend to tier towards the final product and then reduce it when they need to. They've yeah. done that for everything. Mm -hmm. So, so what I would say is yes, you don't want them to be able to rent it forever. Um, I think that a good way to compromise that would be CIG have for a long time talked about how the default loadouts are crap. And mm -hmm. lots of Star Citizen's goal is upgrading your ship. And mm -hmm. you just shouldn't be able to upgrade a rental ship. Yeah, that would make sense. Just right? don't, no, no, no upgrade. No rentals. customization on yeah. a rental ship. You, you don't own it. So why should you be allowed to change I can't, it? I, I can't take take my rental from Avis into a uh, uh, into a mod shop and pick the <laughs> shit out of it. I mean, I wish you could. That'd be hilarious. But... That's a, that's a very common sense limitation, I think. Yeah. You can't I think it should part. be a lot you less. It. You can fix it. Like I'm not yeah, I'm not saying it should be 20 UEC. Right? No. But like you still need to earn it, but like 20,000 UEC. 10 or, or 20,000 like UEC for a day. Yeah. You can get that in a day of work and then you've got it for a day and you can try it out. Uh, yeah. 150 or, is How long how long would it take to earn 150,000 UEC in game right now? Long time. Uh, for me, about five hours of 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 crash free gameplay. Uh, that's the average. Would be five. That includes okay. crashes and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, I, I I do this thing called Zero to Hero, where I play a just an Aurora and nothing else, and a starting cash and a separate account from my normal account. And on that account, I just play that starting starting ship and see how much I can get. And I've averaged between sixty and a hundred thousand UEC, depending on where you can go. If you can, like, uh, in terms of, it depends on where you can get it to uh, a night. And that's with me doing streaming and other things. So it's it's like eh, about three to four hours per per that. So that the hundred fifty thousand it would be about would be about five to six hours and i think even five four to five hours would be it would be a reasonable time for your typical player that's a player that they know what they're doing yeah. uh, a new player probably you're looking at like 10 to 20 hours of gameplay yeah. so that's a bit too much see see what i think is you know the brilliance of having the rentals in especially in the final game is you look at like okay so you you're starting off here starting off in your aurora and you want to be a miner for example right and you go to look at the ship store and you're like, okay, the prospector is like 2 million UEC or something. I don't even know what the actual cost is currently, but, but a lot. And you're like, well, shit, that's a long way away. But then you go to the ship rental store and they're like, hey, you can rent it for 20,000 UEC a day. And you're like, well, hey, if I can just figure out a way to get 20 grand with my Aurora, then I can rent the prospector for a day and start mining. And hopefully I can make enough money to rent it for another day. And, you know, that kind of thing. You know and I mean? you can try it and see if you like mining. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I also I have FPS brilliant. mining. So, yeah. I really hope they allow players to rent their ships out, though. That's that's yeah. uh, a personal thing I think they should allow. Uh, Shiver, you haven't said anything in a while. What's your thoughts? Uh, the problem is, I agree with all of you on all of your points. <laughs> I I agree. I agree with Paul. That I agree with everyone on everything. <laughs> Pretty much in this instance, because it's like I, he's completely right. If you make it too cheap, it's just going to be exploited. Or it's not tested, etc. But at the same time, you you do want it to be accessible, like you say. And it, yeah, it, this I'm glad I don't fucking work in CIG on this. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> glad it's not my job to work this shit out. I, I I will say I think there's an easy compromise, which is. You set one day limits kind of low, but you also set like 150 to 200,000 or, you know, more for higher, like longer levels. So like you have, you set it to low levels for one day just for trying it out and whatever you lose it. It's not that hard to get it back. Yeah. Um, but you, if you want to do it for more than a day, 
Like if you you did it, you've already rented it for one day, and then the next day you come back and you rent it for another day, it's more money. Well, like it's like buying 30, a Tesla, 000. and then it continues. If you try to do it one, it, what if you try to do it day after day after day, it'll just increase the prices for you. Buying so that a way, Tesla, it prevents you from just going, from being able to just go one. Just try to work the system so that you're like, oh, I'm I'm getting for twenty thousand a day every day, that kind of thing. Buying a Tesla is like a hundred thousand dollars. Well, no, I know, but oh, what? Okay, seventy Canadian. Canadian. 50 to 70, yeah. Yeah. Um, renting it's like 200 bucks for a day. Yeah, yeah, about that. All I know is if you watch this this screen here, at some point, there it is right there. Mustang Alpha, rent it from 45,000 UEC. I'm sorry, it's a freaking Mustang. That's what it should cost to buy. <laughs> Not rent for a single day. That's the price can... to buy a Mustang. Well, yeah, and, and well, the other thing, the other thing you need to do is you need to make make the. Um, <laughs> actually, it's not. The, you know what the price of the Mustang is? In I game? don't. I don't want to know. I'm already yes, pissed I, off I, enough. I, I, three, I do want to know. Three hundred thousand. One. Oh boy. That's obscene. Two. The cost to rent a car should not be a sixth of the cost to buy it. That is. Also obscene. <laughs> um, All of this is obscene. So what you're saying is it's a nay to the prices on the Mustang. <laughs> it's question time. I hope y'all have been asking some fucking <laughs> questions. So I, I want to. I have, I have a question for Paul here, or Moose, as we like to call him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you manage to earn a hundred grand in three or four hours with an Aurora? I would love to know. What are you doing for those three or four hours? So, um, what I do is I take the Aurora, um, and right now the best way of making money, well, first off, here's, here's a step-by-step -step process. If you're new to the game, here's my suggestion. Boot up, get into your ship go around and do either some box missions to kind of explore the, the map a little bit while earning some money. If you do box missions that are, they can get you 8k or more per run. You can sometimes pick up three to four of them uh, in one area. So like in a round crusader that will then deliver all to like Hurston or R Corp. So that takes some time. Then you can earn up, up to 20 to 30,000 in just one box run with everything. Okay. Oh, um, you can also climb up ladders with boxes in your hand. So the Aurora makes it the best ship option because <laughs> when you enter when you enter the, the Aurora with a box in your hand, you can just put it down inside your cab and then fly away. Um, after you've earned a little bit of that, you buy two new guns for your Aurora because your Aurora holds four size one guns. Then once you've installed those guns on, usually some something that either like is exactly the same as the, the starting guns or whatever you want to set it up. <clears throat> set it up as looking at the meta of whatever whatever it is at the time then you go to uh delamar fly to delamar first then pick out the north rock security which is the the pro tem bounty hunter um things under the bounties okay when you're there pick it up uh they'll you'll do the little promo mission you have to blow up like a uh uh the buccaneer and then you unlock like four to five missions in um at all times under bounty hunters and they're all around Delamar. Um with the top level missions being ten thousand uh, payouts, but you have to fight like a cat not a caterpillar, I'm sorry, a hammerhead, which you won't be able to beat in an Aurora. <laughs> um but the <laughs> but the eight K missions you can buy beat like um let's see uh the Cutlass, um the Connie and um the Valkyrie. Um, or ones you can you get for the eight Ks, so you can earn eight thousand, and it takes about ten minutes max to do that. Eight thousand per run, and they instantly respawn in those areas. So you're looking at eight thousand and ten minutes. So uh, my NA math is terrible. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> um, not calculator. Uh. All right, so that's 8,000. 
times what is it six yeah so that's forty eight thousand in one hour okay that's pretty good and then times four for four hours is about one hundred ninety two thousand. that's if you're ridiculously efficient that's why mm -hmm. i i much that much that down to about a hundred thousand in, in four to five hours now how long did it take <clears throat> you to figure out this you saw him just said it was about 20 seconds <laughs> uh it took Thanks, me Jim. from i started doing zero to hero in three three four and then um in three four in like january and then in three five i figured i i bought my first ship in game with in-game cash that i'd earned with that starter pack and that was just a uh uh an aurora ln was it three uh -huh. five? Yeah, you know, it was. It was three five that we got the persistence. So it was at the end of three four that I actually was able to purchase an Aurora LN, which was four hundred and seventy thousand UEC. This is mm -hmm. before you could buy buy weapons to persist. So it was a it was a straight upgrade because you get two size two weapons on the uh, Aurora uh -huh. as uh, for that one. Um, but yeah, I think the most I've earned is about six hundred thousand UEC. Um from a sit down and then an avenger is 700 and like 70 000 right now so okay uh, it took me a long time to figure all these things out it's essentially you got to find high concentrations of missions that give you good um mm -hmm. good payouts and that are quick so you know the skimmer missions are pretty good if they would stick around for longer because six thousand five hundred you do one, and if another one pops up right away, then you can get 6,500 every mission. You can just constantly chain them together. I have um, one question key. for you before yeah. we move on to everyone else's questions. Uh -huh. Is doing that fun? For me, yeah. Because a lot of it is, especially for the, the early, early start uh, starter ships, there's a lot of risk. Like, I, I don't think it's fun for your typical player, a player who has three ships and it, when one ship blows up they go whatever i'll go to get the next one with an aurora like there is always the chance that my ass is going to splatter against the side of one of these ships and just die i've gotten killed by everything you know even super experienced and doing this for a long time i still can get killed by a by a um a cutlass if i'm not careful so there's still some element of danger and and practice um and especially if players show up you know and they want to kill me now suddenly it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous shit shit for me because i'm in an aurora and these are all designed for pve not really pvp the aurora is god awful at pvp unless you really know what you're doing and i'm not that good of a pilot so uh, the yeah. answer is the answer is for me yes for your average person no but i wouldn't suggest your average person pick up the game yet because it's not there mm -hmm. you know what i find fun right now borderlands because i can shoot shit and just more guns pop out that's mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> we discussed this. It's we did. That's due to your limited time on the PC. It and is. everyone, you know, when someone plays a game, they want that introduction, the middle meat and, you know, meat and potatoes where the point, you know, in, in Borderlands, you're shooting the shit out of everything and picking up lots of loot. And then you want the gratification because, you know, end of session, I did well, and I'm going to have a big wank about this later. Star Citizen is not that game where you can just go in, shoot some shit, go, oh, I'm really proud of myself, and have a wang. You've got to mm -hmm. spend hours just traveling. It's like EVE as well. You, you're not going to really do that in EVE either. If I've got an hour and a half to game in, I'm not going to get anywhere towards getting a ship in no. Star Citizen. If I have an hour and a half to game in, man, I'm going to get so many fucking guns in Borderlands. But Just, that's not Star Citizen. I know, I know, mm. but it's currently this. It's something Shiver and I were talking about before the cast, so it's pointless. But it's mm. the I just I don't have the time for Star Citizen right now. It's it requires such yeah. a time investment that I can't. I do not have the time to invest in it. I have the time to invest an hour here and there in something like Borderlands because it's instant gratification. I can feel happy about it and then I can move on. Whereas Star Citizen would require just It's quite funny because I'm the opposite. I, I'm like, I would and could sink fucking hours into this game. 
but there's I have more hours to sink into this game than the game <laughs> has available for me at the moment. <laughs> and, to, and, and as I have s- said before, you know, you're not really there to enjoy the game. If any, if you have any fun or enjoyment during this game, it's purely coincidental. You are there to test. You yep. will make the pots. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so on. <laughs> okay. Let's get these uh, questions. Uh, question for next week asks, this was last week, how much destructible environments do you think that they'll do and what do you want? Very few. I would like all of the modular structures that make up outposts to be destructible. Yes. I think st- I think anything... I think, yeah. Basically, anything, any structure should be destructible to an extent, but um, with obvious, you know, limitations. But uh, I don't think destructible terrain is actually realistic because of the very complicated nature of it being an online persistent game. Um, yeah, that's impossible. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's possible to do uh, no. deformed, deformed terrain and the amount of crap they have to get through. No, I'm sure they're. I'm sure if you told one of their engineers that their head would just explode. Um, <laughs> they just uh, laugh. The funny of, thing is, of... the funny thing is, I'm sure if you told one of the engineers from uh, uh, Germany, they'd be like, "Yeah, we could do it." I'm sure they could. They could do it. It's it had ten years to the development <laughs> cycle. No, they'd be like, "Yeah, it's done. It's done tomorrow." But we have to redo the entire game to fit it in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think what you will be able to see though are things like, because they're they're like, they're entities within the game that can be modified. I think you should technically, theoretically, be able to like cut down forests and light things on fire and stuff. Um, yes, you should be able to modify entities in the game. So you should be able to like blow up trees and shit. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. unrealistic to you guys. I, yeah. I'd agree with blowing up trees. I'd agree with blowing up anything that is not terrain. Ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, terrain will not be destructible, but I think other anything that's not terrain should be destructible or at least damageable like you may not be able to wipe an outpost off the face of the earth but you might be able to destroy all of the windows on it and cause it significant damage that would have to be repaired mm. I, I i'd like to see outpost being destroyed <laughs> i'd like to see trees be destroyed because you should be able to harvest them for yeah. resources and plants and such like that. But I don't think you'd be like, you'll see deformable ground when a bomb goes off. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> trees and stuff won't have physics yet, but mm-hmm. I'd imagine trees on planets will have physics. You'll be able to knock them down. Mm-hmm. And they'll be on some weird timer of, if no one's there watching, they respawn. Mm-hmm. Like it's, yeah, like, they, I think they could do that with the physics grids. The way that they're doing physics grids, they could actually, yep. do that. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think um, that they yeah. like other games where it has. To they don't have to load in. Yeah, they, they don't have to load in all of the trees and the entirety of the fucking planet, just yeah. where people are. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And that can load in again and again and again. They're going to do it for trees. They're going to do it for mineables. It's not one and done. It's you'll use it. But I, I would respond. like destructible environments, but it. The, the, it's that really fine line where you know, okay, let you can destroy everything, and you've got this multi-level base. But because the environment's destroyed, you can destroy that whole supporting floor, and it's just going to hover there. And you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I regret my decision. Yeah. But at the same yeah. time, if I've got a tonk and I fire it at this paper-thin wall, and there's this glorious explosion, and then the walls just sat there going, yeah, <laughs> fuck you, are made out of titanium yeah. or made out of uh, uh, what was it, vibranium. I, I yeah. think you know? <laughs> uh, I think one of the red factions, red faction guerrilla, did it best, or not best, but did it right. Of you can destroy all of the outer sphere of a building, but the like the metal supports will still be there, right? Mm-hmm. And it, that's what Battlefield did too. Yeah. Um, eventually, what they did, what they had though, was like if you you could destroy the supports and the whole building would collapse. But you would it would require time and effort to destroy an entire building. It wouldn't be instantaneously. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think you could do that with with the again with the modular structures because they just they're they're the same things. They're copy pasted. They yeah. just have different interiors. Yeah. So. Uh, Elwook asks, why is everyone so whiny about the interdiction mechanic? Everyone has expe has expected and asked for this for years. Is this community insane, dude? <laughs> Well, yes, but that not we're in, we're all insane. We're support, we're Star Citizen supporters. Uh, Paul, how many hours have you put into Star Citizen over the past nineteen years? I don't have the the account. The last time I looked, the Astropub account has streamed Star Citizen for one thousand seven hundred and fifty hours. Yeah, that is insane. That is, insane. Yeah. That is <laughs> that's over the last three years. I think that's and more that's, than I've played Rocket Rocket League, and that's saying something. How how many hours was that? One thousand. One thousand seven hundred and fifty hours. Wow. Uh, if I did the calculations right, it's like three months. That's three months wow. of like twenty four hour days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the for answer to the first question, yeah, we're we are insane. Answer to the second question, the problem, one of the biggest problems actually with the Star Citizen community. When Star Citizen first started, the community was so small and everyone was so in agreement and everything was roses and daisies and smelled really nice and everyone was happy. Everyone had their own ideas of what the game would become because it was all David in has mind. never smelled nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a fact, but you don't have to broadcast it out on the internet. Come on, man. Um the community is oh. insane because the community is huge and you've got people that hate the idea of interdiction you've got people that love the interdiction and the problem with a vocal community is everyone's going to be vocal about something else so the people that don't like something are going to be vocal about that one thing i'm sure there are people that like trains that are like man i can't wait to take the train and star citizen me on the other hand i'm like Fuck this shit. I don't play a goddamn fucking video game to take the fucking train. I get to do that every fucking day in the own real fucking life. God, fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right there, dude. No, uh, Ottawa just got a train system, and it's fucking killing me, and I hate it. Why do you use it? I miss it? LAMP. Uh, there's no option not to use it. it you're forced to if you want to use uh, public transport in the city now. It's, it's fucking bullshit. But you can't use buses? No, they're getting rid of the buses. All buses will lead you to the train, and then you will take the train if you want to go downtown, is the idea. They're getting rid of all okay. buses. Okay! Yeah, that sucks. It sucks, because if you're not on the route, it'll take you an additional 45 minutes to get to the route, then take the route, then get off the route. It's fucking stupid. I'm fucking fed up with fucking trains god fucking damn it also by the you're way everyone, i'm sorry in, you're, i'm you're i'm trying to get my swearing out now before the baby comes i Good like one. the trains in star citizen yeah they're very they're nice fun. they're fast i, like, I, 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 like I haven't actually been on one <laughs> i like trains i'm just i'm, I'm the I'm amount fine. the amount of time you like spent the, the amount of time you spent complaining about the trains and you've never even ridden one <laughs> it's it's yeah, that sounds like eris yeah that's me wow I think you've dedicated like at least an hour Citizen. of this show to complaining about the trains. And stuff. Yeah, that's me. I like the trains in Star Citizen because in my country, it's the only way you're actually going to see a fucking train appear at a station. <laughs> uh, <laughs> me asks, are you prepared for everyone in EVE to now come over to Star Citizen because they've introduced a final ship to compete the gameplay loop that is EVE PvP? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that. Are you prepared for everyone in EVE to now come over to Star Citizen because they've introduced a final ship to compete, complete, complete. the gameplay loop that is EVE PvP? Uh, I object yeah. because it's it, the, the EVE PvP loop isn't there. We don't have the mail, so you can receive the, oh, how the fuck dare you blow up my ship when I'm fucking mining? I hope you're fucking <laughs> proud of yourself. I was just fucking mining. It's like, yeah, I war decked you and you're out mining. Who's the thick one, really? Okay. Also, also on top of all of that, um, I cannot harvest bodies of my enemies and keep them in my hold uh, for extended periods of time. This is not Eve PvP unless I can literally hold the dead body of my enemy 
uh, and then and then sell that for money, um, or just have it and just 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 discard it into space, and then like they make make shit about make make up shit about it. Okay, rent rent a corp hangar on a space station just for corp storage. <laughs> <laughs> The corpses were the best <laughs> item in that game. <laughs> the fact that you could carry the yeah. corpse of your enemies around. <laughs> uh, I know, but the the honest answer is we've already seen it from Elite. I was attacked by um by PVPers from Elite. Um, like they they've already started coming over from Elite because Elites you know having Sorry. drugs. And and uh, yes, I 100% believe that Eve players will start coming over once Star Citizen starts having more complete features like the 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 introduction, you know. Yep. And I also I also I seriously believe that this is not the only introduction way that's going to happen. I think it's just the beginning. And I still think that mining the mind introduction mines will be a yeah. thing. So um, I want to get through a couple of these because we actually have a, f a number. Many of them by fast cart. Um, Eluk asks, will there be a relay live stream of the SpaceX deal today? All right. So I should probably explain what's happening today. Right? Yes. Space okay. time. Quickly. Go. Uh, first to answer the question. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I just got back from being gone for two weeks in the bush, and I'm really tired. So I'm using all my energy to do this podcast. <laughs> So I don't think I'm going to do the, a live stream of the event later. And I'm Plus, going to be walking like... around in circles around a mall because uh, my life has now devolved to walking until this baby comes out. Oh, I thought <laughs> you were going for that job interview with um... Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> don't have the beard right now. I need to grow it back. You'd be a, you'd be a great Santa Claus. Um, so anyway, uh, the answer to the question is no, I don't think we'll have a live stream. However, um, I do encourage everyone to watch. Uh, there's a link in the in our Discord under the Space Race channel. Um, this evening, Elon Musk will be giving an update to Starship, uh, Starship's design specifically, uh, what changes they've made and uh, what progress they've made. Obviously, anyone who's been paying any attention to space knows that um, they've almost completed their first prototype of Starship, and it looks pretty amazing. It's 165 feet tall, and that is just the spacecraft portion of the vehicle. You mean that's just the um, tip? Yes, it's just the tip. <laughs> um, it looks so fucking cool. Um, I will. I, I obviously should throw a link in here, so I will throw a link in here uh, to picture. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's... Um, yeah. So there, uh, it's a uh, time is eight o'clock Eastern this evening. Um, the link is in our uh, Discord, and uh, hope everyone else enjoys me in watching. Um, even though we're not actually going to be, you know, doing a hangout. Joins you in spirit. Yes. What are you drinking, you know there, Paul? I mean? Shinerbach. Okay. I'm having a, a steam whistle. Canada's premium Ooh. pilsner. Nice. Um, so just as an, ad uh, you know, addition to that, I will be getting back into streaming um, SpaceX stuff, well, space stuff in general here in October. They're really, it's been really quiet for about four to six weeks. Uh, there haven't been many launches, but there's supposed to be a whole bunch of launches here coming up towards the end of the year. So I'll be doing more coverage again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to fictional space stuff. Vaskart asks, so body pillows, did anyone besides Shiver notice <laughs> what Sean Tracy did with his hands when he talked about them? I didn't I did notice not. that. What did he do with his hands? I don't know. Oh, Vaskart better tell us what, what happened. I think here. Shiver's telling us. Oh, nice. Uh, Fastcard also asks, when they talked about attachments in Inside Star Citizen, I had something totally different in mind. Was I the only one? Yes, yeah. you were the only one in that regard. Yeah. No. 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 Really? No, it wasn't. I, I agree. I agree. What, what, what other uh, attachments did you have in mind, Paul? 
specifically? In great no detail? No comment. Master May. Vaskart <laughs> <laughs> uh, also asks, uh, even with the character creation redesign, I will manage to make an ugly character. Who can I pay to make me look good in Star Citizen and IRL? Um, I don't know. I just tend to pick default characters and run with it. So not me. You're that Stand person next who... to me at Citizen Con and you'll look a hell of a lot better. <laughs> you're the per you're the person in World of Warcraft who's running around in their underwear, aren't you? I know you. No, never. Uh yeah, I'm sure it's never happened, yeah. I don't like underwear. Um Lanorth asked, Do we know if or when we will get orbiting stations and security outposts just above planets, like we've seen in the past in Freelancer and more recently in the Misc Freelancer commercial, or in the Citizen Con where they introduced Area 18? You mean Alsar? I, I think the North wants to know if they're actually going to, well, when they're going to bring in orbiting the space station. I think that's that's definitely going to be tied in with physics grids, but then how off that? Well, yeah. So there's two. It's a two part question, right? He's asking when we'll get orbital sta orbiting stations, the stations that actually orbit the planet, and then secondly, when will we get security outposts above planets? Um, but I don't think they'll just be security outposts, but we will need to have that outpost above every planet, um, because we do have ships in Star Citizen that can't land, like the Orion. Yeah. Um, that it needs to go to the planet to have a and and have an orbital trading station where it can dock and offload its enormous amount of material. I also think it wouldn't surprise me if the if the when we actually see the Orion in game if it can land just because they seem to be doing stuff like that a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm, well, I was wondering whether or not they're going to bring in space elevate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's all good. I was just thinking. Space elevators. Uh, they won't work. No, no. It's it's an issue with physics grids, but it's also a, uh, or space elevator. They'll, they'll have to. A space elevator can take a day in IRL uh. to to go up. Um, because it's not just like a sh a straight like an elevator. You're just like do 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 do. It it mm. climbs. Then it's a, the climber will will rise and then will will stop and then will climb and then stop and then climb and then stop. Because if you went straight up that entire way. You'd have um, well, you'd have a pressurized cabin, so it wouldn't be that bad. But it would still cause a lot of uh, wear and tear on the climbers. Um, so you'd probably have stages where you'd go up and then to to lessen the um, uh, as you get less and less friction, the higher up you go. So space elevators are great in theory, mm -hmm. um, but terrible, in terrible in practice. Uh, space elevators make an absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, target for a terrorist attack because mm -hmm. you've got no it's it's no i was just thinking this got fucking morbid fucking quick no but it, it, <laughs> they don't make sense uh like a 40 or like 100 kilometers of friggin cabling all the way up into orbit that gets cut and now all of a sudden it's gonna fall it doesn't work like that uh, the it doesn't fall as much as it whiplashes. The initial area where it would fall, but it, like uh, the problem is, is that depends on where it gets cut, how it will fall, and where it will fall will matter. Um, and we're not talking about like a, like a cable that's the size of um, of like a battleship. We're talking about a cable that's probably pretty thin, um, mostly made out of carbon nanotubes. If the if it is to be, yeah. be, be believed now, and most if of we it would can be get destroyed. carbon nanotubes to work, yeah, that's the issue. The issue is more it's impractical on Earth. It's yes. very practical on Mars and on yes. the Moon, um, because we can make we can make that that we can make them them with uh, with fucking Kevlar. That's yeah. all we need. There, um, it's, but the hard part here it doesn't make sense. No, it's difficult. It's too hard right now to, for it to be to be made. And in yep. game, it would it would. There's too many issues with the physics engine, with the um, uh, with the gr grids, and then like this, the time it would take for it to climb would just take too long. And they're, they're never going to be able to solve the problem if anyone breaks wind and you're trapped in the space elevator with them. <laughs> Pressurized cabins, yo. <laughs> um, I, I think the question is just more got a little like more pressurized. 
The question is more, when are we going to get like orbiting stations closer to planets? Um, and I think that's more of a physics grids and getting things orbiting mm. properly question. Which... I mean, they could probably they could probably just hack them in right now if they wanted to. They they have orbiting stations like Grimhex yeah. and that kind of things around stuff and Alasar. Yeah. The issue is just they don't want to place them in. They want to have them functioning. the The discussion of when those stations will be put in in CIG will happen when they finish the stations yeah. that they're currently working on. They've only finished the exteriors. Now they got to do the interiors. So. It's CIG. Everything must have a reason before it goes anywhere. So mm -hmm. these physics grids as well. They're fucking amazing. You know, because one of the most taxing things that you can put your PC to do is real-time physics calculation. Mm. And having the having the things compartmentalized onto grids, making the amount of information that needs to be processed smaller and in bite-sized chunks for it. And then when you've got server-side OCS cutting out certain things actually being rendered and only being calculated in the back, it's really quite an amazing thing because then, you know, you could have potentially hundreds, thousands of trees in their own independent grid that are, you know, have their own independent physics without taxing the living daylights out of the server or your PC. It, it's mm. a really clever idea. If they get it to work. Uh, Fastcart yeah, asks, work. a good one. There's no more Inside Star Citizen until October 24th. That's like a mm -hmm. month of no Inside Star Citizen. And for those of you that don't know, Inside Star Citizen is the half of the place that we get our information each week the other week mm -hmm. the other half is from <laughs> questions um what are you guys going to do for content uh i'm stealing i mean borrowing some ideas for friday night show um i have no fucking clue and honestly i don't fucking care because there's going to be a baby here well before yeah. the 24th <laughs> and i'm going to be gone motherfuckers the yeah. the next time david wakes up it's going to be like december so um mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh really that question is down to me and shiver and i think we're just gonna dance live <laughs> on stream yeah exactly it would just be 45 minutes to an hour of us dancing and then we'll ask, then you can ask questions about us uh, about hey welcome dancing. to the party zone yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, he's such a um, party in, in reality, though, uh, there's lots of ideas you could do. You could mm -hmm. you could do lore breakdowns, Paul Shelley. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but um, you could also do things like you can look back at other other content that's been in the past. You can um, bring people on to discuss topics about um, uh, like future, like theory theory crafting. Mm -hmm. um, you could um, the distant future, uh, the year two thousand thousand. Yeah. Uh, we could, we could, I mean, we could also play you know? the damn game and actually talk to people about certain, <laughs> yeah. aspects, certain, certain aspects of what's going on in the game right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you just say play the game? Oh my yeah. god! I oh, oh, oh my. Go right over there. Uh, actually, I you I know wish, what? For a I long wish time, you wouldn't I have said it like that because I've just lost the game. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I wanted to play the game, but my my computer doesn't like playing the game and streaming, so I sort of <laughs> no, it sure doesn't. I, you know I why? gave up because you don't have an AMD CPU. No one has an AMD <laughs> CPU because AMD is shit. Bryce Arena asks, "Whoa, <laughs> Bryce, someone sue this man for libel? For Just go for it." Bryce Arena asks, "Is anyone going to back Homeworld Three game off Fig less than twenty four hours until the cam campaign is done?" Uh... I did. I will no. be doing that now no. because yeah. No, I fundamentally and I this is my problem is I don't like the way that 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 approach to things. It's being published by Gearbox, and Gearbox is not a company that needs your fucking money. They have plenty of money. Oh yeah, why, um, why is it being done at, that way? So what they're doing is they've already been they've already been greenlit for for production, but they, these are essially stretch goals. So essentially, what they're saying is we won't make this into the game unless you back it with this separate crowdfunding sources because gearbox doesn't want to pay for it yeah and that's a real shitty method of making a video game and what they're trying to do is is leverage fans um nostalgia and desire for a sequel which has when homeworld 2 come out like in the, the mid 2000s early 2000s they're essentially uh... they're, they're just 
Yeah, it was quite a while ago. Uh, yeah. Homeworld it, was... it really sucks that Gearbox Homeworld makes Borderlands because if they didn't make Borderlands, I'd be able to oh. say fuck them. Period. This is actually today is the twentieth anniversary of Homeworld. Really? Um, really? Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, but I mean Homeworld is... two. Because that was the last game they made. Well, they made Sand or whatever Deserts of Chishak or whatever that was. Deserts of Carrot. I Karak, think two yeah. was two thousand three. Yeah. So, like, I I don't want to shit on the developers, and I'm sure this is not the developer's choice. I'm like one hundred percent sure that this was Gearbox's choice. And the fact that, as Aris just pointed out, they're these are the developers behind, uh, or these are the publishers behind um, behind uh, uh, Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands. And they've Which made having fuck tons of money. They're having with, the uh, best launch they've ever had with ever Borderlands had. Like. And yet they turn around and they look at you look at something like like um, Homeworld, like this is a niche market. So we're just going to make you crowdfund it. They're assholes. Like, fuck uh, you. Um, I have a, I have a <laughs> I question. Wanna... Okay. Has anyone ever Which... actually done the, the investment thing with Fig? No, no, but it's it's run by Microsoft, so I, I'm imagining it's 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 like it's fairly like they wouldn't be able to get away with it that well if they they weren't f- pretty. Uh, I'm yeah. very curious about because you can do that with the Homeworld three. Mm-hmm. You can um, become you can get essentially with for those of you guys who don't know, Fig is a crowd service a crowdfunding service just like Kickstarter, but you you can reach a level where you can get money for the investments. Yeah, you essentially yeah. become a uh, stockholder or a, a portion. A, a a holder of the company or holder of the game's profits yeah. to you. I, I would like to point out that it is run by Gearbox. Mm-hmm. Campaign is run by Gearbox. Fig itself has Randy Pitchford on the board of directors, and they are asking for you to crowdfund a game from a AAA publisher that's already Which been is going to end up on Epic. Yep, I wasn't even going to go there. <laughs> but it... it, it or, Look into just yeah. That's all I wanted. To I say. might, I I, might actually be, I would like, I actually be might be more more inclined to invest so that I get money back potentially mm-hmm. if the game's a, a success rather than yeah. actually. Yeah, I, I don't have. I wouldn't have a problem with that. It's just like I just think it's kind of scummy to try to do a crowdfunding campaign on top of it. And, and here, this is the thing: I really want Homeworld three to succeed, and I think lots of people are excited about it. But it's it's kind of shady to do that kind of tactic. I like want to already take have the money. You already here. have a developer. I need to take a second here to um, say something that should be said often, and actually should never have to be said, but seems to have to be said often. Um, I was reading an article earlier today about Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the the rebrand that's coming up, that has some just fucking ass ideas about exclusivity of game modes to PlayStation, which is it's fucking stupid. It's fucking horrible. That's weird. Uh, the there's a like sabotage game mode that is in, exclusive to PlayStation 4 for a year. If only there was someone who was complaining about all this exclusive stuff when it started. And shiver, being put shiver, down. shiver, shut up for a second. Um, <laughs> no, no, here, here's the thing uh, it's bullshit. But at the same time, oh, this man. is no, no, I and I, I hate that this has to be said, but it does. Um, it's not in the developer's pay grade. So when something like this happens, when Homeworld is, you know, funded on FIG, or when Call of Duty is put, you know, has loot boxes put in and is an exclusive to Sony for a year, don't shit on the developers because the devs have, in that. have no fucking choice period and in many True. in many cases True. it's they were they, they had to do it because it's the only way they could pay their staff and keep the keep the lights on and, these exclusive and, deals from like epic yep. they make money and 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 don't don't shit on the devs for that um yep. I'm I'm not saying go buy the games if you're upset about it. I'm just saying do not attack the devs for that because there's yes. too many people who do that. Do not attack devs for anything because they're there. They, it's their job. They're told make this game, and then they're told make this game and put loot boxes in, and they're like, 
that's that's my job. That's my fucking job. And if I don't do mm. it, they're going to fire me and they're going to put in someone else who will. Never mm. fucking attack the devs. You want to attack the publisher for some bullshit decisions that they make? Fine. That's a publisher. Not- they're an entity. Guess what? Entities aren't people, United States of America. Entities are not people. Okay. Fuckers. Let's bring it down to us a little bit. <laughs> I want to get through. We got a lot of stuff obscene. to cover here. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I really wanted to get that across because just don't. <laughs> like, it's... Don't. Um... Eve Steve asks, the Mantis and Saber were both surprised and sold with, I I think, like, they were both shown off and sold within a few days and were instantly playable. Why would CIG spend time... Same with the Arrow. Sorry? So, same with the Arrow. The Arrow did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would CIG spend time making these ships and having them ready to sell within a few days, but ships like the Hull series and others have been going on for five years and counting? Wouldn't it be better to finish those ships people paid for five years ago rather than these new ones? Squadron 42. And the only... Go ahead. Oh, oh, I was just going to say also... Either a lot of those ships either they can't make yet mm-hmm. because the tech just doesn't work, like to Hull C. <laughs> yeah. um, the, or they don't or, have the assets, like they don't or, have the design for it, like the merchantmen. Or they would just yeah. Or the yeah, they they were the, the Banu Defender was literally their pathway to making the merchantmen because they had to figure out the Banu styling thing. Yeah. Um and then there's other ones that are just it would just break the game if they put them in because you can haul like all of the cargo in the entire game in one mm-hmm. shot. <laughs> and it's, RSI it's, ships are really friggin' easy for them to make now. Yeah. Oh, look, let's add some panels. Guess what? We've got all the panels made. Let's just throw them together and it's done. Okay, there's a ship. See fucking Aegis. This is the reason why yeah. there's like 50,000 Aegis ships because it's easy for them to make. They have all the pallets and they have... Everything from the massive capital ship sized pallets all the way down to like, you know, snub fighters essentially kind of size. So they can do uh, an Aegis ship pretty quickly. Um, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the um, um, the Nautilus out next year. You know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. uh, just because it's an Aegis ship and it's pretty quick. But then you have things like the Endeavor. The Endeavor is not going to come out until after the game's launched. I'm sorry. It's Very just it's the, it's the size of a fucking of a, of a fucking bangle. Um and it's it has its own detachable ship portion. It has like there's just too many things that have to be invented for that well, ship to be functional. It also has like every possible play mechanic in the entire fucking game yeah. in one ship. And like, um it's all I, in I, there. I, and then people complain about the Taurus not coming in. Like why isn't the Taurus in? And the answer is because the Taurus is just another Connie. And yeah, when they get all of the other two, when, when they when they get, yeah, and when they get all, all of the other variants that they still need to do, like they're just finishing up the Vanguard with three seven, and they've got other variants with other ships that are coming out. Um, once they get towards the towards the end, yeah, it makes sense for them to do the Taurus, but the Taurus is going to require some redesign because they removed the snub ship and replaced it with a physics grid for cargo. Yeah. So and there's definitely. There's definitely some changes they're going to have to make to the structure of the Connie, which means it's going to take time for them to work on it. And would they rather do that or work on a, me- a ship and a mechanic that's going to be in Squadron 42 and then work on it, you know, work it into Star Citizen at the same time? I think there's a people there's who have bought f- Taurus are in for a surprise whenever their ship keeps going for these red flags. <laughs> <laughs> there's a fun fact about <clears throat> the development of Star Citizen is that the development of Star Citizen right now doesn't matter. It's the development of Squadron 42 that matters. So if a ship Mm -hmm. is developed for Squadron 42, and it's done, and then they decide, oh, hey, we can put this in Star Citizen because it doesn't need to be a secret, then they will. Done. Yeah. And and the thing about it is is it's two birds with one stone. So if if it's something that needs to be in Squadron 42 and it needs to be in Star Citizen... They can just take both of those teams, say, okay, what do we need? What do we need from both of the games? Because um, they're going to share the same code anyways, and then pump it out. And they also like selling those ships that are straight to flyable because they they make money. And CIG needs money. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, um, actually, thank you for that in- intro because I I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I I decided to just go take a look at the the funding for this year while we were on air, and uh, uh, Star Citizen is doing really well. Uh, this year they are unless something goes awry in the fourth quarter on their way to another record year. Um and currently trending towards about 41 million dollars which will be their first year ever breaking 40 million mm-hmm. in a year nice. so they're doing yeah, they, very well they've been on that trend since like may haven't they like yep. over yeah yeah they've been yeah it's been pretty much all year they've been over 40 uh year over year which is the first time they've yeah they've been chasing that for a long time uh but, we've got uh, three questions yeah. that i want to do really quickly uh fast okay. asks Spider-Man is back in the MCU again. Has anyone else lost interest by this point? Not at all. Uh, it's great news. Uh, super, super fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, Very happy. I haven't lost interest by this point. I lost interest ages ago. Yeah, that's because <laughs> you like Batman. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's because you have no taste and like stupid stories about sad sacks who wishes they were bats. You're right. Yep. I know. God. Uh, <laughs> Baskart also asks, who else has signed up for Disney Plus? Uh, I will. Not, not yet, because I can't yet, but as soon as I can, I will. Yep, same here. I will probably. It's just, it's a good deal. It's not too only, good of a deal not to do it. Hulu, I already sign up for, so might as well just just, just extend it to Disney Plus. 100%. Um, I'm going to extend uh, it to ESPN, because hockey. ES, ESPN Plus, uh, on top of ESPN and uh, and Hulu Plus, you also get um, Marvel. Yep. Um, uh, star wars tons Pixar, of new star wars stuff and, yeah and um and disney their entire back catalog i'm about to have a child disney. i don't it yeah, doesn't matter if this that. is a boy child or a or a girl <laughs> child disney, disney is plus. it yeah <laughs> disney plus is essentially all you will ever need for that child growing up because it's go everything from toddler to a, to like to to, to broody yep. teenager yep you know, Eris over there is giving birth to fucking Mowgli, man child. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, um, uh, hey, new name. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, last, last question. Last question. Bryce Arena asks Does anyone think that the hover mode should be gravity def- dependent instead of proximity and atmospheric dependent? Meaning that gravity and maneuvering thruster output should determine if you hover or slowly descend. Mm. Yes. Yes. But I also think it should be atmosphere. I think that they should, uh, honestly, at this point, given the number of attempts they've had, I think they should make something that works and plays well. <laughs> I think, you yes. know what, actually, hang on. <laughs> Nakara, that is a great point, because a long, 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 like six fucking years ago at this point, Chris Roberts said something that I still remember to this day and will never fucking forget, that fun would trump realism any day. Mm-hmm. And you know what would be fucking great? Would be for CIG to accept that the hover mode shit just is is broken in lore, and just say we're gonna make it feel Work. good. We're just gonna make it good. Well, that's kind of what they're doing. They're they basically just entirely scrapped their last attempt and they're putting in a new one. Just they're like, we'll good. try it again. Just make it feel good. Don't care about atmosphere. Don't care about gravity. Just I make just it feel, feel good. Good. And it shouldn't really have hover mode. Should have almost nothing <laughs> to do with atmosphere. Right, look at him. Look at him. Shover, <laughs> hover mode should have nothing to do with atmosphere. Hover mode should have everything to do with gravity. Because mm-hmm. you're not you're in hover mode. You're th- in theory not going at speeds to make atmosphere matter all that much. You're you're mattering gravity more than atmosphere. Because the gravity of the planet is what you're trying to counteract by hovering. Shivers angry at me now. I can tell. No, I'm like, whoa, Doc. This is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, um. It's been great uh, to have you all on. Uh, and by on, I mean, thank you everyone for watching us. Um, unfortunately, I was not a label, uh, uh, not a label to deliver you a baby today. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. No! <laughs> Paul? Uh, thank Moose. you, Moose. Thank you, Moose, for joining <laughs> us on so short a notice. 
I just I just noticed you had moose and you had a free. I was like, do you have free space? I'm just gonna pop in. Yeah, because because uh, someone. Uh, Fastcard had told me that he's like, oh, since you guys can't, you, since you can't do Relay Station anymore, I'm like, I don't do, I used to do replays, but I don't do them anymore for the the Spice Miss Roll, so I, every other week I'm free, so. It's, I haven't, it, don't this tell is me that all on me. Once, once David's gone, I'm just going to have yeah, you I'm going to be every other week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's it all me. the shit out of me, Astro, because I logged into Twitch, and I usually catch, like, at least half an hour of you playing the Expanse RPG. I've been really enjoying it, by the way. Yeah. And this week, I'm like, wh wh where's my Expanse fix? <laughs> <laughs> It's in the archives. Uh, everyone's every. The answer is everyone's at fucking TwitchCon. Is the answer? <laughs> it should have been last week. But like getting players for RPGs is like herding cats. We we seem it's to like get herding cats on fire. We seem it's to like get Jake every fire. second week. Yeah. We seem to get now. We can maybe get Paul every second week. By the way, yeah. um, Paul, I want back on the Astro Pub again. Mm -hmm. after when you're not this, after the baby is after born. After the baby. Uh, yeah. Up until the baby, I'm I'm done. I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm just well, waiting. Well, it's, it's going to be any any moment now. So That's the problem. Uh... It could have been right now. I'm just I'm going <laughs> to go up and check. There might be a baby upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be entertaining. It would. Hey, um, hey David. <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to take him a, a second. I don't know if he's uh... still here. Um, Does Marius sent us a gift? Uh, and I, I just want to say thank you so much, Desmarius. Um, you are such a phenomenal human. Uh, thank you. It wasn't a cowboy hat, was it? No, it was diapers, which are going to be grossly needed. Um, mm -hmm. literally, that's for a good you or for, for the baby? Both. A little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Paul Moose, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Uh, with any luck, I won't see you all next week, but everyone else here will. Good luck. Good Except luck. Moose. Good Move luck. On. And yeah, yeah, reminder everybody, uh, SpaceX presentation uh, in just under six hours. Oh, yes. sorry, just under four hours. Sorry, just under four hours. Uh, Moose, when do you go live for the pub? Yeah. Uh, the pub goes live... Um... What is it? It's uh, just under two, two hours. hours two, two hours from now. Hours from yeah, now. We've, yeah, it's going to be a fantastic show because we actually have we have Firefly and Stim Citizen, both of which are have been in development independently, like a, a, a like nice. software development. Nice. Uh, Firefly is an expert and uh, has been working on artificial intelligence. And I don't know what Stim Citizen does, but I know he does. He works on uh, computer software as well. Nice. So and there's a lot of discussion on development and, and the, the games and everything. So it'll be pretty good. That's fun. Check in on that. Watch the SpaceX stream if you can, and uh, someone yep. will see you next week here, same time, same channel. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Bye.